Ed Werder, trust this guy, know him well, said a source uh, within the Cowboys told him Dak and the Cowboys are getting closer to the negotiation point where they're going to resolve <laughs> the seemingly never-ending contract with Dak Prescott, and it says Prescott will emerge as the highest-paid NFL player. Uh, it should be noted, Travis Frederick, his great center, the Cowboys led the NFL in yards per rush with him, 22nd without him, is no longer a Cowboy and retired. Left tackle Tyron Smith does no longer plays 16 games. He's a 13, 12, 13 a game uh, player in the NFL. Those are their two best offensive linemen. Zach Martin's also older, but still elite. My take on this is the Cowboys now have, and I'll read these off uh, off a of paper here, seven positions where they're top three in player compensation. If this deal comes through, quarterback, running back, left tackle, right guard, defensive end, wide receiver, linebacker. It was eight with Travis Frederick. He just retired. What is the problem with that? In the NFL, you do not have to be great at everything. That's not the game. What you have to be, you have to avoid being terrible or bad at anything. This is the Patriots' genius. They're rarely dominant in any one thing. They're never terrible at everything or anything. Why does that matter? Because football, more than baseball and basketball, is about coaching. Now, I still think quarterbacks are more valuable than a coach, but the NBA, where LeBron goes, they win. Right? Pat Riley's important, but he wasn't winning titles the year before LeBron got there, right? Uh, in the NBA, Phil Jackson, I think the last series he ever coached in the playoffs, I could be wrong, I think he got swept by the Dallas Mavericks. He didn't have enough players. So Red Arbach's not doing anything without Bill Russell. Baseball, it's about your staff. It, I mean, nothing. it's your payroll. The Yankees have 27, 28 world championships. They've always had more stars. They have more history. They have more bankroll. There's no salary cap. There's a reason the Dodgers and the Yankees, you get the point. But in football, salary cap, it's a hard cap, not a lot of loopholes. You need a coach and a quarterback. Those two are the only two that you can point to and say they win. Coaching is so important in football, and I think mostly so good, that if you have a hole, by the time you get to week 12, 13, 14, like Belichick always says, this season's about post-Thanksgiving. That's when you figure out who can coach. That New England's been average many years, slightly above average pre-Thanksgiving. They're great, usually until last year, post-Thanksgiving. Because they were four and five their last nine games. They're old now and unathletic, and, you know, there's limitations. Brady yelling, screaming at his players that can't get open. So I'll give you an example. The Saints. The Saints have a real hole. They can't throw the ball downfield. They couldn't do it with Teddy. They don't do it with Drew Brees. They're still really good. But by the time the playoff comes around, the last three years, they've been eliminated by the Vikings twice and the Rams. Why? Because they averaged 350 yards of offense. And they scored about 22 and a half points a game. In the regular season, they can drop 29, 32, 41. Their offense, not their defense, was the liability against the Rams and the Vikings twice. They just couldn't get enough big plays. That's their hole. The Dallas Cowboys are in a situation right now. Losing Jeff Heath at safety and Byron Jones at corner. Their, their secondary wasn't great with Byron Jones. So now they're going to have to address it in the draft because they, they, they didn't upgrade it massively in free agency. And if they whiff or they have, I mean, are you going to ask a rookie corner to walk into the NFC and dominate? All they are, the Cowboys are a left tackle injury, Tyron Smith, or a secondary injury away from being dreadful on the O-line and regrettable in the secondary. You can't do that in the NFL. You don't have to be great at everything. You can't be terrible at anything. Coaches will attack it relentlessly. So if Dak's the highest paid player, you have seven of the highest paid players at their position in the NFL. We all know it's a salary cap and you're going to be thin, but go ask the Rams. Rams lost Gurley and a right guard, not the same football team. Even with McVay. Even with all those receivers, Rams may have the second or third best receiving core, may have the best in the entire NFL. Couldn't move the ball. Uh, the NFL draft is going forward, as it should. 
Uh, Roger Goodell, the commissioner, sent a memo out warning against public comments from people in the NFL. Um, the NFL draft, the NFL and the NBA have really different sensibilities. The NBA, we watch the highlights more than the games. Uh, it's got a younger fan base. Younger people are on Twitter. It's very beholden to, it's a little more socially conscious. It perceives itself as that. A little more political as a league. And it's also hyper popular on Twitter. The NFL's got an older fan base. Only 22% of Americans are even on Twitter. I would say it's much more NBA fans and soccer fans than baseball and NFL guy. The NFL simply doesn't care about Twitter as much. They're not beholden to it. I'll give you an example. In my life, I make money from a network, cable, radio, uh, podcasting. I don't care about Instagram. I don't make any money off it. So that's what I'm beholden to. I'm beholden to Fox Sports, Fox Sports Radio, FS1, iHeart, my podcast. That's where I make the money. The NFL has figured something out about Twitter. Twitter turns its back on everybody. You know who never turns its back on the NFL? Fox, CBS, NBC. That's who they're loyal to. And those people want to draft. NBA, they start too soon. They lost $500 million on a tweet from an NBA GM. They got all freaked out. NFL doesn't care as much. If the NFL cared about Twitter, Colin Kaepernick would be in the league. They don't because Twitter doesn't pay him anything. The NFL takes care of its TV networks, and the TV networks never turn their back on the NFL. Twitter turns its back on everybody, and that's very closely aligned with the NBA. So what I worry about with the NBA is, oh boy, if you start too soon, some it spikes corona in arenas. Oh my Lord, people go crazy on social media. I think the NBA could have be punitively damaged their reputation by that. NFL is going to hold a draft. Ask yourself this. Does everybody here want to watch another show about a guy who collects tigers? Or do you want to see Tua get drafted by the Miami Dolphins? What do you want to watch? Because that's what the NFL cares about. The NFL got lucky with this. The combine had already taken place. We had an awesome Super Bowl. But free agency, the NFL schedule is coming out, by the way, in two weeks, April 17th. I'll spend four days on that. And the NFL draft is mostly phone calls and paperwork. And they are not beholden to social media. They don't give a rip if they did Kaepernick's in this league and Cam's getting a job tomorrow with a team. They don't care. They care about their TV partners. That's who pay them. That's who pays them. And they want a draft. And they're going to get a draft. And I think the draft is absolutely what we need. Any sports that we can do with social distancing, are very valuable. Free agency period. It got a lot of pushback. This is this is wrong, NFL. You are forgetting. And they did it, and it was unbelievable. How much fun was free agency? It was a blast. The Brady Buccaneer thing was unbelievable. And we were all okay. If you can do sports without creating a virus, you can't worry about optics. The NFL doesn't. It's one of the things I really like about him. I'm going to ask Mark Cuban about that in one hour. This is a league, NBA, which has been very, very political and socially conscious and sometimes Twitter connected. And if they push back on a season and they get in there too early and you have a spike in coronaviruses in cities having NBA games, how does that play for the league? Are you concerned about the backlash for that? All leagues have different sensibilities. NFL and the NBA are two totally separate businesses. The NFL is domestic. It worries about its domestic TV partners. The NBA is much more global and international. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.